the president of Kilkenny Chamber of Commerce, Colin Ahern. Over to you, Colin. Thanks, John. i um, just like to thank everyone for attending today and those that will look uh, at the recording later on. Um, it's um, a difficult day for everyone going into, uh, going into level five, but we will, <clears throat> we will soldier on as best we can. Um, over the past few weeks, we have been uh, running a few events uh, around Brexit as it's, becoming, uh, as it's coming onto our horizon very quickly. Um, and today is no different, uh, and I'm delighted to be joined by Paul Whitnell today, who's going to be um, telling us about his organisation, BITA, and what they do. Um, normally, um, I, would, I would start by giving a brief bio uh, of, the, of the speaker, but I just think it's far more entertaining when Paul does that himself and tells us about himself and his organisation. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to pass over to Paul Whitnell uh, and he'll tell us about Bitta and himself and, and uh, Brexit in general uh, and his thoughts on that. So, Paul, over to you. Well, firstly, um, it's, uh, it's always great uh, to be back in Kilkenny um, because there is the first point uh, I would make. Um, I lived there for uh, many years and I damaged my liver uh, with Colin O'Hearn. Um, in the left bank um, on many, many nights watching Munster rugby matches. Um, so it's great to be uh, back in Kelly, in Kelly this morning um, and discussing things uh, that happened uh, because we, when we look back at the history um, of, of how this happened with BITA, um, there are huge connections to Kilkenny and indeed um, that's where it all began. Um, I want to break down uh, what I'm doing today into three segments. Um, the first one, Will be a brief history uh, on myself and the uh, the origin of the organization and um, the second segment will be i suppose layman's terms uh, what we feel over here on the ground are the effects of uh, a hard brexit um, and the relationship effects that uh, we do foresee happening uh, between britain and ireland in particular and then finally um in, introduce you to for those who don't know about the bita uh, introduce you to about the organization and uh, how the, the mechanics of the organization work and how it can benefit you as a person um, in your business um, and uh, you can connect to uh, other bit of chapters um, globally now. Um, so I'll go through that in, in terms of formal presentation. So the, the historic part, um, as I said, um, funny enough was when we actually did come up uh, with this concept um, it was through my own um, immigration to uh, the UK and I was toing and froing uh, back on the weekends uh, for the first part because my family uh, were still in Kilkenny and while doing so I was meeting Colin on a regular basis telling him about my troubles and tribulations of coming over to the UK and a different culture of working uh, within um, a bigger country and a bigger population. And um, it was there we sat down and discussed the concept of setting up an organization that would make this transition uh, better for each other. So hence the BITA uh, was born. And I can proudly say that the BITA was born um, at a breakfast meeting in the Ormond Hotel. And there he is 10 years later, still sitting in the same place. So uh, I'm delighted to see that. Um, the, Organisations since um, we, we, we created BITA have has been very successful um, and we've kind of kept things going despite the difficulties of COVID. Uh, we've managed to actually broaden the organisation, ironically, in a global sense because of things like Zoom um, and technologies that I'm not very, very keen on. Um, I do believe that there's nothing to replace the one-to-one -one meeting. I hope, hope to God that we never um, utilize this as a, as, a, as a platform that is going to be forever because I for one I'm a champion of talking to people up front and I would like to see that continue. So to bring us on to the um, effects in layman's terms as I said to Brexit there are certain aspects of this um, problem that is on the horizon and I suppose the three key areas that we have to overcome in terms of the current and negotiations are around sanctions, um, they are around fishing, and they are about the, dis the, the dis dispute resolutions uh, that need to be put in place uh, in order to overcome. So they're, they're the stumbling blocks at the moment that I believe, and that we're hearing back. 
um, that are currently um, in the way of creating a proper agreement. But there's also a general opinion that there is a lot of fudging going on. And you know, we will see uh, the fruits of real negotiation coming in at the latter end of these negotiations. And we believe that you know, I would not discount um, a, a, an agreement coming at the 11th hour, uh, because these things tend to go through lots of posturing and these things tend to change uh, radically um, and particular in the latter end of negotiations. So we're all hopeful and fingers crossed that this is actually apparent. But in, you know, if it doesn't happen, um, there is no doubt that there is going to be a massive disruption. But this, despite the disruption, we have to look at the fundamentals here also. And the fundamentals are that despite difficulties of politics, this is all about people. This is all about people on two islands. And trade and business is also about people. So despite the difficulties in politics and the tariffs that could appear for all of these rules and regulations, people will still be trading. And BITA is a typical example of an organization that is set up to fundamentally fuel that activity and help that activity ongoing. And I believe that we will find ways to actually overcome the political disruption that is Brexit. I believe that the two billion trade between the two countries may be disrupted for a period of time, but will get stronger in the long term because we will finally realize that Britain is a great friend and neighbor to Ireland. You might say that, my God, he's been over there too long now and he's turned into one of them. You know, it's the polar opposite. You actually never lose your Irishness when you're away. In fact, you become more Irish, if anything else. And it's amazing how the community over here, over 350,000 people, respond in the same way. And that's another thing that we mention and we have to mention is that there are 350,000 Irish people in this country to facilitate you in terms of communication and do it on your terms in terms of understanding your language, our language. And that is another thing that we cannot discount, you know, and it, it is around us. So I, for one, I'm looking at this in a very positive way. And I know that after I've set up organizations all over the country in the UK and in Ireland, that that connectivity can continue. But let's look at the, some of the effects in terms of what we are actually facing. The first one that we're look, facing is the, the content of, of, um, of shopping may change and increase. So there could be massive increases in certain things on the shelf. 28% of food comes from the EU, and this is obviously going to be disrupted. 53% of UK food stuff come from the UK, but a large percentage of that actually comes from Ireland. So what we're going to see is we're going to see massive fresh food disruption. And that is one huge thing that I notice when I come home to Ireland, the difference between a plate of food that you can go into a lovely pub in the left bank or wherever, and then you go into Witherspoons and the other rubbish that you get on processed food. You know, So this is where it's going to affect society in layman's terms. So fresh food disruption will be a massive, massive disruption for a time. The supply issues, and there's going to be shortages, and um, that's going to be affected. And there's going to be a reduced choice for us on the shelves in terms of what we were traditionally used to. There is going to be also effects in terms of gas, electricity. There's going to be significant increases in that regard because 45% of the gas supplies currently come from Europe. So all these have to be overcome. Travel dis disruption is going to be another area. Currently, there's 53.7 million people traveling to Europe in 2018 and 18, 18 million traveling to the rest of the world. So that is going to be um, fairly disruptive in terms of you know, the, the, the airports, but also things like the healthcare that comes with it will no longer exist. So therefore, there is going to be problems in that area. And funding in terms of banking cards and charges will also be disruptive. So the free movement of people is also another area where we are really worried about on the ground over here. There's a massive threat to the shortage of medical supplies and the importance of that 
cannot be underestimated, especially in the current crisis we are within this pandemic. The importation of goods will be more expensive and housing prices potentially could be affected, which will cause a major, major, major slowdown. That has a knock on effect to one of the key areas at the moment that is propping up the economy over here, which is the construction section. And then we go to the port delays. So these are the key effects that will happen in the event of a hard Brexit. But I remind myself all the time, as I said in the beginning, I'm no expert on Brexit, but what we're hearing on the ground and what we're seeing on the ground is the difficulties that we are faced. But if we cast our mind back to the time of the uh, peace process, and when I came over here, I moved over to a place called Kent. And I find out that in Leeds Castle, beautiful part of Kent, outside Maidstone, that's where the meeting took place between George Hume, George Mitchell, uh, John Hume, uh, I think it was um, Bill Clinton, and a couple of others. And uh, that's where the initial beginning of the peace process started in terms of conversation. If these things can be overcome, anything can be overcome. And I'm a firm believer that the connectivity and responsibility is ours. It's actually groups like ourselves, businesses like ourselves, and people like ourselves that can put pressure on politics to make these things happen. So I am a positive mind in this, in, in terms of life is changing, climate is changing, lots of things are changing, but we need to embrace that change. So for that reason, that took me to the point of setting up an organization that would facilitate in that regard and do it with complete integrity, positivity and passion. So that takes me into the next part where I want to pass on um, some of the things that I've learned in 10 years in coming over to the UK. I was forced with a change of my life to come to the UK because of the economic downturn in 2009 and 10 in Ireland. And I was forced to take my family and displace them from Kilkenny at the time to move to Kent, which was a very, very difficult and brave decision to make. But I'd like to pass on five tips and five observations in those 10 years. And one thing I've learned in terms of communication is the frequency of what we do and how we do it. I'm a great advocate for any business to actually be very frequent in terms of your communication. So if, if it's for meetings or if it's for agendas, the frequency of what you do, we can't talk enough about things. Keep reminding ourselves what an agenda is, where the progress is made, and don't be leaving it to chance to actually see the outcome of any project. So for any business, frequency is absolutely vital in my book. The other thing I would advocate is looking around us because a lot of us get very, very much, uh, and this is something I'm not kind of being very crit I'm not a critique about, um, but it's very, something that's very Irish. Um, a Corkman will tell you no by saying, I will, yeah. And this is what I've seen and learned, you know, when I come over to the UK. That sometimes part of the problem is around us and the solution is around us. But we fail to look. We fail to look at what is around us and we fail to challenge ourselves to see if the solution or the problem is there. So examine yourself a bit more, especially in these times, and examine yourself and challenge yourself because this is the way we are going to overcome the new ways and create a new norm. The other thing I would say, and I heard this at a conference a couple of months ago, where this 75 year old man was asked if he had what, could change one thing in a successful life, what it would be. And his answer was, if I could have been brave earlier. And straight away, I took that as the one takeaway. And that's why I love the chamber chats because, you know, chamber chats should be supported because if you can get one takeaway from a chamber chat, well then it's worthwhile sitting down 
while I put you to sleep. But these is the one thing, it's, it's be brave early. Say what you mean and mean what you say. And that is something I have learned since I've come over here. The last thing is about real relationships. And in order to have a real relationship, you need to put something into something. And that brings me on to the BITA in a very apt way. So let's take you through the organization. Let's show you the channel that we give to you to be able to help you and others achieve your goals, grow your business, and grow your opportunity. So I'll take you on to the first slide, if I could, John. And that's about the establishment of the organization. It was established in 2012, as I said, in the Ormond in Kilkenny. And the whole reason behind the BITA was to give people access to a cultural exchange, because that, that's one of the first thing I noted when I was in the UK, that culture of business was so different. In Ireland, access to people was so simple. But in the UK, there was a gatekeeper, and it was very, very difficult to be able to speak to someone on a one-to-one -one basis. I had taken that for granted, and I didn't understand that that process is in place. The gatekeeper was in place. And what that was doing, it was costing me money to find that out. I was wasting time, I was wasting resource, and I was getting nowhere for months. But I had to live, I had to eat, I had to fly over. All of those expenses were still there. But I didn't understand the cultural difference between doing business in Ireland and in England. So the BITA, was, was set up to establish what that cultural difference is. When we went to the first meeting, I created a committee, a board, and they asked me in that board meeting, what is BITA? And I said, it's people who know people that help people. And someone said, write that down. And we did. And here we have our tagline today, which is people that know people that help people. So what we needed to do then was provide solutions for our members at an industry level that was successful. Because talk is cheap. What we wanted to do was, by example, show how the organization works. So onto the next slide, and we talk about the importance of connection. So the understanding is very important. And we've spoken earlier about the effects of what Brexit can have in an organization, what the effects it can have in a community and in a country. But that has got to be understood both ways. And this is where I implore, and I was delighted to be part um, uh, this morning with um, Taoiseach and um, the Shared Ireland, um, which is a vision of what he wants to do going forward with both nations, speaking together, understanding together, communicating together, working together. And it may, may happen that we might have to give the UK more than ne quoi in the Eurovision. That might happen. We may have to give them 12 points, you know? Um, but these are things where that kind of, you know, banter and need, these needs to come into play. We need to have that connectivity. And that's what better play a big part in. Next slide. John is going to explain during this presentation that we want to do um, a couple of polls. The first poll, will be uh, asking you a question. Do you trade or do you plan to trade in the UK? So everybody, you'll see um, uh, the poll is up there. And what I would ask you to do is if you would answer it as quickly as you can. Uh, it's a little bit like uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Press your buttons now, please. Yes or no. And we'll give you the, um, the result in a matter of a couple of seconds. This is your opportunity to just uh, give a feel for you know, what the general attitude and opinions um, in the room are. So I'll end the poll uh, right now and share the results. Can you see the results there? 50-50. Uh, exactly 50-50. You couldn't, you couldn't make it up, Paul. I'll hand back to you. You continue on. So the vision of the organization was put in place. And the reason we needed to put a vision in is we need to put a structure to this. So the vision of the organization of BITA was to put chapters operating in the UK, Ireland and further afield as the British and Irish Trading Alliance 
and it was to influence and recognize as an organization that increased trade and cooperation between both nations. So that aspect happened when I was actually um, in the UK for a couple of months. And I went to a company called Crest and they had a massive problem with lightweight blocks. And I said, I know where there's a million lightweight blocks. And Sean Quinn had them up in um, somewhere apart in Northern Ireland and, um, and many others. And there was another place in, in, uh, outside, in, um, oh, uh, outside Kilkenny, in fact, uh, there was another block company. So I introduced those two parties and between them, they negotiated a deal to be able to release that stock and facilitate a problem that was in the UK. And it was then it dawned it on me that the opportunity of having people, bear in mind, I said there was 350,000 Irish people in the UK. We can access those people and they can communicate on your behalf. And that's what BITA is all about. On to the next slide. That was our mission. We created our mission. We can help more people and further influence as a collective. That's the important part, as a collective. So what we advocate here is that BITA as a chapter, be it in Scotland, Liverpool, Manchester, London, Brighton, Dublin, Cork, it doesn't matter. It's the same organization doing the same thing in the same way. And we make it simple to be able to communicate like that. The next slide is the values. And this is all about integrity. The core values needed to be understood and understood by every single chapter so they could actually then know how this transition works. So it's all about integrity. Our intentions are clear, transactions are transparent, and trust is paramount. Passion is generosity of spirit, giving of time and your expertise, and sharing your knowledge and contacts. What we didn't want was companies coming in and cherry picking, taking what they want out of it and giving a little. We have a lovely little revolving door for people like that in BITA. You go straight out because if you don't understand how the organization, well, then you don't belong to the organization. And delivery is very important. What we do is what we say, we never give up. And we communicate with clarity, with a preference for you to speak to who you want to. On to the next slide. The organization goals are very important because that is our game plan. And that is what we stick to. So in terms of membership, the whole idea is to increase the membership in the UK and Ireland and develop the relationships internationally as we have done so in the USA and Australia and extend the reach to international waters like Canada and further afield. I will tell you more how we've done that, but it's all about increasing members. It's not about a membership gatherer. We're not a membership gatherer. What we want is we want members to understand the concept and ethos of the organization and play a part in it. So that's why we only have 450 members because those 450 members understand what we do, they play a part in it, and they participate at the highest level, which makes it successful. Some of which are here today, and I will introduce you to some later on. The skills and knowledge, we facilitate relationships through different forms of training, apprenticeship schemes, and we make it affordable for SMEs to upskill their teams and make better, better business. Bitter, better business. <laughs> I won't say that one again. In terms of opportunity and influence, we provide a brand new website, which has been launched next week, which will have an own business hub within. And what the business hub allows us to do is present to large projects, a tier one option with tier two and tier three companies. And that then evolves into the supply chain and affords companies like Merlin Showers, who are also represented here today, the ability to be able to connect with the market, the ability to be able to connect with the influencers in the market and the owners of businesses that will proudly display and support their products. And that is a great example of a local company who have really embraced what we've done in the UK. We create an environment with leaders of the industry who capitalize on BITA's connections. And we influence, we influence because we are able to be a voice. We're not government bonded or government funded, sorry. And the reason we don't want to be government funded is because they would do just that. And we don't want to be that. We want to have a voice. We want to be your voice, the member's voice. 
in terms of CSR, it is a massive vehicle. Diversity inclusion, we see that over here with the big diversity of cultures that are in existence in the UK. And in Ireland, of course. But this is a big part of what we do. We're great advocates for women in business. We provide a conduit for our members to assist in making positive changes to their struggles in life. So what we do is we encourage and facilitate trade between the UK internationally through collaboration. We act as a conduit between buyers and sellers. And not alone do we act as a conduit, but we actually make it easier for a company to find a way to connect with the proper decision-making process, be it in the UK or abroad. And those people are done by relationships, by building proper relationships. We provide the supply chain with a support through resourcing, training, mentoring is a very, very important part of what we do. I'm now 53 years of age, and I think I'm only learning. And one of the things that I've benefited from greatly was the mentoring program that BITA provide. There's fantastic people who have had amazing successes in the world. Sean Mulryan from Ballymore, Ray O'Rourke from Lang O'Rourke, and they are personally involved in the organization's patrons. And they have stepped up to be part of the mentoring process to a small SME from anywhere. And they will give you guidance of, of making you understand their successes in terms of the trials and tribulations that they have went through. And that's incredible to have that facility within the organization. So we arrange workshops and communication events to enhance the learning and provide the whole essence of what BITA do. We influence the industry because we have the ability now to actually create that conversation in terms of what we can do. And we negotiate and collaborate in that regard. Some of the things that we can provide in terms of pathways and global challenges, um, by example, are what we're doing currently with a Be Plastic Aware globally initiative. And I'll talk about that separately in a minute. As a non-for-profit organization, BIDA was set up as an organization with in the interests of integrity, transparency, and generosity of spirit and mind. And it's not about money. My dad died around five years ago, and I'll always remember him saying to me on his bed that stop chasing money, he says, because you're useless at it. <laughs> and he said to me, your currency is people. And when he saw what Bitter was growing into, thankfully he did, he saw the good that it was doing. And that's why BITA remains a non-for-profit organization that I'm proud of, that we can actually take that out of the equation. It is about people. And that for me is the most important part of the organization. As I said, we advocate women in business and young entrepreneurs. And for that reason, we set up an organization within BITA called BITA X, which is the young generation. So we bring in the young generation who can teach us an awful lot in terms of technology, and we let them, you know, do what they do. The millennials, they're mad as March hairs, they're brilliant, but they teach us an awful lot and we can teach them also. On to the next slide. How we do this is we bring in partnership. And these are the amazing sponsors that we brought in to help us. So we're self-finance as an organization, but what happens is these companies see the value in what we do for them. So if I, if I take an example of Kerry London, Kerry London was an organization that's an insurance company. And we were able to go back to every member of our organization and ask them to oversee what their current insurance arrangement was. And if they could advise them that it was the best policy they could get, or there was better policies out there and you could create value. And it was that partnership that created the synergy for Kerry London to decide that the value was huge in bidder for them. So therefore they put something into the organization and became a platinum sponsor. So all of these people have given the organization 10,000 pounds. And the reason is they feel the value in the organization. They see the value in the organization and they participate in that value. And I'm delighted to see that there's three or four of those organizations that are Irish companies that are currently in Ireland. Ballymore, 
Alecki serve, silver shemmings, momentum support. Um, that would be all the Irish companies that are in, in currently in, the, in Ireland. On to the next slide. As we go, we have created some fantastic patrons. And the patrons are the people who endorse and advocate what we do. They understand the organization for the value that's in it. And they support the organization in terms of their resources and being part of the organization. And as you can see, there's a very influential list of people just on that page. That's only one page, and I just picked a few. O'Flynn Construction is a great company um, that is in Cork. Uh, Ray O'Rourke, Lang O'Rourke, Sean Carrigy, PJ Hegarty's, and they're all synonymous names to the Irish market. And these are all the supporters of what the ITA do. Next slide, please. That extends, obviously, further afield. And this is a relationship that's a picture taken three years ago when the ambassador, Dan Mulhall, was the uh, ambassador of the UK to Ireland, um, and sorry, Ireland to UK, but is now currently the ambassador uh, uh, in America. And, and that's where our relationships extend from. When I started the organization, I did so, and I launched it in the ambassador's residence in London. And we subsequently signed an MOU in America with 23 states, again, with the ambassador president as the ambassador of America. And our Taoiseach currently, and before that, Leo Vradka, have also supported and endorsed the organization in a heavy way. So the supporters are very important to the organization and, and extends outwardly also. You know, we have people like James Nesbitt, the actor, a great advocate of the organization, Michael Kreis, the British touring car driver, another great advocate of the organization. So the support is widely known and getting wider as we go. And we want today to extend that further into people and businesses in Kilkenny. Next slide, please. So there's the existence of the organization. The organization is obviously in London. That's the London board. Uh, Liverpool, Manchester, Dublin, Cork, Isle of Man, Leeds, Brighton, Scotland in conjunction with Causeway, Northern Ireland in conjunction um, with Causeway also, Beta X, which I mentioned, 23 states of America, Sydney and Australia. And the planned ones are already going, Wales, Galway, Birmingham, Newcastle, Devon, Kent, Canada, Algarve, Germany, Poland. They're all on the way. Next slide, please. So this is the second poll. And the question on the second poll I would like to ask is, do you think that Brexit will have a major impact on the business. Considering what I said, do you think that Brexit will have a major impact on business and the economy? So John is gonna... Right, I've got that there now. Sorry, it took me a couple of seconds. So if you'd press on your buttons, please vote now and we'll see what the general feel of the room is. Uh, I'll give it just a couple of seconds now um, because we're always keeping an eye on the clock. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one. That's the end of the poll. And the results there are, yes, the vast majority do think that Brexit is worth talking about, to say the very least. Back to you, Paul. On to the next slide. And we're nearly there. So I mentioned about our global forum. The Global Forum was a great addition to the organization, but what we've done is we've decided to concentrate on two areas. And the meaning of this is that we can actually make it measurable, we can make it achievable, and we can also interact uh, from a network perspective um, outside of that. So the Global Forum is going to concentrate on plastic and the reduction of plastic uh, in the construction industry in particular, but the reduction in, in plastic in, in any way. And that's what I'm asking this morning for the businesses and people in Kilkenny to take part in this part for us. Do your little part. When you're out for a walk, get a plastic bag, fill it with plastic as you're walking, pick it up, send me a picture on LinkedIn. That's your part played. And if we all do our little pieces on that, but what we've done with the Global Forum is we've organized in 2021 on the 20th or 15th, I think, of October, we're, we're going to do a global beach clean. So um, in, in terms of Kilkenny, that can be a global river clean. Um, so we can actually participate in that regard. We will be sending you more details 
but that is all about the global forum and that's done in conjunction with the um the club hibernia and inusa the procurement hub um, is another addition that is going to be launched on our website fairly soon and that offers companies the ability to go into major projects we will create a pqq system within beta that will facilitate you as a business to bring you into a bigger area of opportunity in terms of projects. That is the difficulty for some small businesses to participate in bigger projects. We will overcome that with the procurement hub in Vita um, over the next two years. And we're engaging with people like DAA, Heathrow Airport, and many, many other big projects to be able to um, do this. So this is the underpinning, the, the, the procurement hub will become a, a profit center for BITA. Next slide, please. In terms of the pathway, the best way to join BITA and maximize the opportunity uh, of membership with BITA is it's not just about paying your membership and paying a subscription and leaving it there. What we want you to do is follow this pathway, providing the information and your profile on the CRM system. We can maximize what people know about your company. Tell us about what you provide. We will then communicate that outwardly to everybody in terms of what you provide and tell us what you're looking for. Tell us the people that you want involved in the community of BITA. That is my job to go and talk to them, engage with them and get them involved in the organization so they can facilitate and help you. And then attend the events and market yourself to be able to do it. And we have all the ways and means to be able to facilitate you in that regard. Next slide, please. These are the type of events we do. Uh, they're very prestigious, and it's just giving you an idea of, you know, everything uh, that's done with Bitta is done with a bit of je ne sais quoi. And I suppose that's reflected when we have had in the past a collaboration with yourselves in the Kilkenny Chamber in Mount Juliet, one of the most gorgeous golf courses that I consider in the world. Uh, and and it's del we're delighted to participate, in, and we'll continue to do so in, in bringing Bitta members down to your day uh, with the Kilkenny Chamber of Commerce in Mount Juliet. But there are some of the events that we do, and I just wanted to give you a feel of, of the kind of stuff we do in that regard. So the last poll is, do you think business will overcome barrier challenges with Brexit, that Brexit present? So do you think most businesses will overcome the barriers, challenges that Brexit presents? So that poll is launched there now. So if you can get busy on your buttons, casting your votes, please. I can see the votes coming in. Uh, very strongly in one direction, which I will now share with you. Uh, so ending the poll now, actually 100% of you believe that businesses will overcome barriers, which is very reassuring. That's great to hear, you know, great positivity and uh, positive attitude, Paul. Yes, indeed. And finally, um, how to get involved, why to get involved. I mean, these are just examples of things that we got. You see the car in the background. That was a brilliant story about a, a plumber who wanted to become a touring car driver. That was his ambition. He was a go-kart champion. And because we brought in the sponsors and facilitated in, in doing so, we now have Michael Kreese as the British touring car driver with our car, with our name on the car, and more importantly. And that can be seen on ITV. It's a great story. And again, Merlin Industries, uh, if you look at the car, anytime it goes off the track into the gravel, all you can see is Merlin because they're on the back side of the car, the best part of the car. And it is a fantastic way to get the brand out there, you know? So when Merlin see Michael going into the gravel, they're going, yes, two more minutes on, on television that is 35 million people viewing this, you know? So there are the ways to get involved. I'm conscious of time now, so I'm gonna flick it on and play you a small video of a testimony of a couple of members um, who have joined Bitter. For us, the lead generation has been phenomenal because it has able, enabled us to get to know people on that personal level. And like I said before, it helps us open the doors that, as a small company, we would never have been able to do. Because if I'm going to phone up uh, and try and speak to a company to just say the likes of J Coffee Construction, they will have tens or dozens of people phoning them up on a weekly basis. But coming to these events has allowed us to get to know the, the correct people, the right people, and they've been able to open the doors that we would never ever have been able to help 
uh, been able to do this before. It's been, it's been phenomenal for us. Bitter for me personally, and also for our business, Money Corps, has been um, a fantastic success. Like, I mean, we've been involved for the last three or four years, and um, in that time, we've met so many interesting people and so many interesting companies. And it's had um, it's created friendships, it's created relationships, and it's actually created a lot of business for our organisation, Money Corps. I have never come across any events uh, like the construction network lunches that are hosted in London. To have the opportunity four times a year to meet people in that area, which is an area our business uh, works with a lot, to get everybody in one room is absolutely exceptional. It would probably it would probably take uh, one of our staff probably two years to access the same people that I can on a one-to-one access in one day at a construction network. So that's that's just a snippet of of a uh, the organisation in terms of people's testimony. And um, there's the team. Uh, Diane Birch is the lady that actually makes it. I'm the pretty face in the front of it. That's all. Um, and Colin would probably, would probably say not so pretty. Um, but um, there's a team, Diane Birch is a marketing strategist, Laura is the operations person, and there their contacts are there uh, for those of you who want to make the direct line contact with them. Finally, the last slide, I think, is um, any questions. But before I ask you any questions, I do want to bring in one or two people that can give you a testimony um, to the organization. And the first one is our incoming chair. Um, he not alone can give you a testimony of of how Bitta has worked for him and his business, uh, but also in terms of the effects of the financial world in terms of what Brexit is gonna do. So I'm gonna ask a Aidan Scholar to come in and just give us a, an overview um, of how we actually can interact with Bitta in Ireland um, and, and also uh, that quick question about Brexit as well. Hi, Paul. Uh, thanks very much for this uh, opportunity. Um, I mean, we as a firm have found uh, Bitter to be a fantastic way of making connections with new clients, both in Ireland and across the UK. And it's also given us the ability, I suppose, to present on items, including a recent uh, item there on the Irish and UK budgets, where we were able to work with an accounting firm that's also a member of Bitter in the UK. Um, and that enables us to, I suppose, supply information to potential clients where they have operations on both sides of the Irish Sea uh, to help them both expand and I suppose maintain a business in the current environment. So we found Bitter to be a fantastic opportunity and you know we're happy to contribute and share our skills and information with uh, clients as, as things evolve and with members of Bitter, uh, especially in the, the current uh, I suppose financial and economic circumstances. And in terms of, um, you know, uh, how do people get in touch with us in Ireland, uh, Aidan, uh, to actually create a synergy? For instance, if there was wanted to be a, a chapter um, set up in Kilkenny itself, how does that happen? Yeah, I mean, we're very happy to open new chapters. And indeed, um, we've had a number of new people come on to the, the main Irish board. Uh, so you can find us through the, the bit of ie website and um, we meet uh, at the Irish board level on a, a monthly basis uh, historically we were doing a lot more uh, physical events as well but we continue to meet by zoom on a monthly basis uh, and and yes we've opened obviously chapters have opened in, in Cork as well as Dublin uh, but we're anxious to expand so if the opportunity was there and more people want to become involved from Kilkenny we would be very happy to assist them uh, to, to set up as well thanks Aidan uh, Stephen Kelly, I know you're, you're under pressure there with time, but just you're a great advocate of um, a, a guy that contacted us during the summer months of this year, um, despite the difficulties with COVID and everything like that. Could you just give people a kind of uh, an overview on the experiences uh, of why you contact us and the far reaching implications that had for you and your business? Oh, thanks. Uh, can you hear me there? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Bob. I suppose. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, one of the hats I have been wearing for quite a while is I've been back and over to for to London over the last uh, seven years, twice a year, involved in a small engineering business with Nike, which I've subsequently uh, acquired early in the year. And another opportunity arrived uh, on my doorstep in February of this year, which 
caused me a lot of angst because it would involve, if I was to be involved in the business, it would involve me um, interacting with people on an international level. And I found that very challenging initially. And uh, even though I had been over and back to London quite and found it interesting and stimulating city, you were the very first uh, friendly Irish man, first Irish man I actually interacted with in London. And I, I remember saying to a friend of mine, what do you, he, I said, I'm heading over to uh, Kent to meet uh, Paul. I got your number, Paul, from John. Thanks, John. And my, my friend said to me, what are you going to do? You're just going to rock up in the middle of COVID and uh, ask a guy for contacts. And yeah, that's generally the idea, I said. And what I really was highly admiring of you at the time, because we don't know each other very well, Paul, you, you offered accommodation. You met me at train station. You picked me up. We went for a meal. I thought it was just very generous of you um, to, to, to give your time. And where I think we have a great synergy going forward is our currency is really relationships because uh, people get obsessed about money and status and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's how two people interact. And that's what I really like about Bitter. I didn't know it was there before now, I wish I had. I think it's absolutely an amazing organization you've set up genuinely, uh, I highly admire it. Uh, I, I really look forward, it's the early stages yet, but I really look forward because you have also got contacts uh, which are amazing in Australia and in America. And uh, if, if, if the product and the service is right, then it's just about relationships and people getting to know each other. And I think that's remarkable that Kilkenny can have those contacts with you and across the world as well. So I'm delighted. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Stephen. And finally, Damien Fitzpatrick, we mentioned Merlin Industries and this company I have an awful lot of love for because um, I, there's a, there's a local man set it up, made a fantastic business. He then done the brightest thing and that was sold out. He's now somewhere around the world playing golf, I would imagine. So Damien uh, Fitzpatrick from Merlin, uh, just give us some of your experiences and um, uh, in, in terms of your interaction with Bitter. So Paul, thanks a million for inviting us along today. Um, so our, we've been members for with Bitter for a number of years now. And I suppose an Irish company uh, doing business in the UK. We're in the UK 20 years now, but um, where, where we found a bit of extremely helpful is opening those doors that you mentioned earlier, Paul, about, you know, the gatekeepers and the people, especially in construction, where a lot of our business comes from construction and, and the big construction companies that and uh, the, the, the commercial projects that take place there. And, you know, the interaction with, with BETA and the associations that take place and the, org and the, the get-togethers, that has opened a huge amount of doors for us that we previously wouldn't have had you know, our business came from retail on high street retail business, but you know, over the last number of years, our, our, our contract business or, or commercial business grown substantially. And a lot of this is down to the, the, the relationships that were built up as a, as a consequence of better. So hugely influential um, and very resourceful from, from that perspective. So it has been a very, very big, um, I suppose, influence for us and it's, it's allowed us to, to grow our, our footprint in the UK and we're, we're proudly uh, number one share enclosure company, which is a massive market, UK, 63 million population. So very proud to say we are the biggest share enclosure company. And for an Irish company to say that uh, in the UK, UK it's, 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 a, it's a great, great achievement. And and, and thanks to Bitter for, for, the, for the help along the way. Um, so it is possible, by the way. And just to say to any other company out there, you know, the, the UK might seem like a, a, a big market, but as Paul said, there's a lot of Irish people over there, a lot of Irish companies doing business. And, and British people genuinely like doing business people, Irish people. They actually, they really genuinely do like doing business. And we like doing business with the UK too. So it's, it's been, it's worked extremely well for us. Great, Damien. Well, thank you very much, folks. I mean, it's been a joy for me to actually uh, come into Kilkenny this morning and present to you. Um, I'd like to thank John Hurley and your president, uh, Colin O'Hearn, um, for, for, for allowing me the opportunity to come in um, and say hello to everybody who, who knows me over there. Um, I hope to get over again soon for uh, a weekend and get into Tynan's Bar and see Liam still behind the counter there and, uh, and do all the things that we enjoy doing in Kilkenny. Um, I would say uh, the message is um, keep positive, um, stay safe, and um, thank you very much. You know where I am uh, now, and uh, we're always there to help any company, any individual, any time. So thank you. Well, thanks very much, Paul. And uh, um, that's a tremendous presentation. And 
conscious of time, I'll uh, hand over straight away to our president, Colin Ahern, to uh, wrap up and uh, close the, the session. Thanks, John. Look, thanks, Paul. It was great. It's such a good news story, and it was great to hear how it came about and, and how it's going. Um, I, I, so we're, we're very appreciative of your time today. Also to the to everyone that contributed, Damien, Aidan, and Stephen, thanks so much. Um, we'll be, um, especially the fact that we're in level five now, the Chamber are going to be uh, conducting Chamber chats on a more regular basis. So we'll be in touch with everyone over the coming weeks uh, with, 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 with more events. Um, i just like to say, Paul, that, that uh, it's great that a Cork man is not afraid to stole the virtues of the whole of Ireland, as opposed to just the Rebel County, um, and uh, and we're very appreciative that 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 you're so humble uh, to do that. So thanks everyone for turning up uh, and listening to us. Thank you, Paul, for contributing um, and for presenting to us, and we'll see you all soon. Thank you very much.